I ran with the last of my strength down the school hall, my lungs burning, but I couldn't stop. I heard that Alfred and Loki were running after me. They were about to catch up with me, and then I didn't want to be dismembered. I needed to survive. Then the pool door caught my eye. There was no choice. I ran in there and tried to run to the window, but then the door slammed. Alfred and Loki found me. They were coming. This was the end. Alfred was my brother, and Loki was his best friend. I had been in love with him for as long as I could remember. Loki seemed perfect to me, tall, muscular, and smart. There was always something to talk about with him, but Loki never took me seriously. No matter how many times I tried to hint at my feelings, I sent anonymous valentines and flirted, but all in vain. I had to accept that we were friends, but secretly, I was hoping for more. Right now, me, Alfred, and Loki were just hanging out. We spent a weekend in clubs, and last week, we also had a lot of fun. But this time, Loki came up to me and asked me to dance. What? Seriously? I shyly agreed. As we danced, Loki approached me, and my skin crawled. He whispered that I was beautiful. He was flirting with me. But then Loki took my hand and gave it to a strange squeeze. Wait, was he taking my pulse? Apparently, Loki was just drunk, but the next day, he called me right in the morning. I was surprised. We usually communicated through my brother. Loki immediately suggested a walk. I started to call out to Alfred, but Loki interrupted me. Let's go for a walk together. What had gotten into him? Until this day, he didn't notice me and then suddenly he asked me out? I was in shock. Never mind, this was my dream. I immediately began to get ready. I put on my best dress and heels. Meeting at the house, we went for a walk around the city. Loki was so easy. We were chatting about everything from science to TikTok trends, and then Loki suddenly slowed down outside the museum. Look, there's the Gunther Hackens exhibition going on right now. Shall we go in? This was the crazy guy who made sculptures out of human bodies. I refused. I didn't want to see this abomination. Loki drooped. There was an awkward pause between us after that. I tried to fix the situation, but Loki said he was tired and took me home. As I said goodbye to him, I noticed my brother carrying a large crate. Hey, what's inside? But Alfred snapped back that it was none of my business. That was strange. He was never rude to me. What had gotten into him? My mood was ruined. The date didn't go well, and Alfred was so angry. I tried to push the bad thoughts away and went to bed. But in the morning, I was awakened by a strange rustling. As soon as I opened my eyes, I jumped back in horror. Alfred was sitting on my bed with a measuring tape. What's happening? But Alfred snapped. He wanted to buy me jeans, but he didn't know the size. Anger boiled up inside me. Did he expect me to believe that? I couldn't stand it and shouted at him to get out. Enough! And at that moment, my phone rang. Loki. I picked up the phone right away, and he asked if I'd like to go on a date. But yesterday, Loki wanted to finish it quickly, and now he was inviting me again. It seemed strange, but I couldn't hide my joy. This was my second chance. Meeting me, Loki apologized for yesterday's behavior. He just really wanted to get to that exhibition because he dreamt of becoming a pathologist, even though training was very expensive. My reaction upset him. I nodded understandingly. It was my fault. And then he went to the movies for a horror movie. At one point, I was so scared that I smuggled up to Loki. But he wasn't afraid at all. He didn't turn away from the horrific scenes of the mad scientist's operations, but rather looked at everything with interest. It scared me. Was this really interesting? Then we went to a bowling alley, but Loki was looking into his phone the whole game. He was constantly being sent messages. I waited until Loki was distracted, then looked at his phone, and I was terrified. My brother sent Loki a picture of a man in bloodstained clothes. What? Then Loki called out to me, asking what I was looking at. I shivered. It is the menu. The whole thing was creepy. I immediately went to Loki and said that I wanted to go home. I had a headache. He offered to walk me through, but as we approached the house, I noticed my brother at the garage. He looked around as if he was afraid, and he was carrying a long black bag. What was there? I pulled Loki by the tree. I needed to find out what my brother was up to, but Loki suddenly started pulling me in the other direction, saying it was none of our business. Wasn't he interested? And then I heard a noise. Alfred dropped a bag. It clattered to the floor. Some strange knives fell out of it. I looked back at Loki in shock and asked if he had seen it, but he shrugged. 
What are you talking about? What do you mean? I was about to point out the evidence to Loki when he grabbed me around my waist and pulled me to him before I knew it. Loki suddenly kissed me. My cheeks burned. Oh my god. When Loki pulled away, I looked away in embarrassment, waiting for a declaration of love. But instead, Loki said to me, see you later, and ran away. I looked around, confused. I didn't understand. My brother was acting strange and so was Loki. Everything was gone crazy. I turned around, but my brother was gone. Damn. These boxes, the bag, and the photo. I was afraid. What had Alfred gotten himself into? I realized that I just couldn't sit still. I would sneak into his room and find out for myself. Making up my mind, I quickly made my way to my brother's room and carefully turned the door handle. But it wouldn't budge. Damn. He had locked up. He was definitely hiding something. I took the hairpin out of my hair and began to pick at the lock. Judging by the video from TikTok, if you raise the mechanisms at the same time, the door will open. But five minutes passed, and I was still fumbling. Heck. And then, just as I was about to give up, the lock clicked. Got it. I went inside. The boxes of bags were next to the bed. He wasn't even going to hide them. But as soon as I opened them, <gasps> I froze and they were stuffed with surgical instruments. But why would Alfred want them? I was completely lost. And then I saw that my brother had left the laptop on. Damn, I had never taken his stuff before. But I needed to find out. Glancing back, I quietly walked over to his laptop. The conversation between him and Loki was opened. Just as I was about to read, I heard footsteps approaching. Oh no. Convulsively, I began to look through the conversation, and then I saw a strange phrase. Alfred wrote that he would like to sell her for organs. I immediately remembered how he measured my height while I slept, how he hid the surgical instruments, Loki's strange hobbies, and this black bag. Would they pack my organs in it? Oh my god, I felt a rush of heat. I wanted to run, but the footsteps were already very close. At the last second, I slipped under the bed, and Alfred and Loki came into the room. I was shaking with fear. What if they noticed me? Alfred and Loki began to discuss something, but all I could hear was my own heart pounding. Go away. But then Loki fell silent, and I listened. He asked if everything was ready for the operation. He just wanted to get this thing over with. Alfred replied, My sister doesn't suspect anything. My heart sank. Was courtship? Even kiss a game to distract me? He found a way to make some money. Sell me for organs. Tears welled up my eyes. Scumbag. No, I needed to get out of here. But before I could think of anything else, Alfred dropped the phone right next to me. Oh my god. My mouth was dry with excitement. If only he didn't notice me. But then Alfred bent down and our eyes met. At the same time, he grabbed my arm and pulled me out from under the bed. Look who I found here. I was shaking with fear. I couldn't believe that my own brother and my beloved wanted to sell me for organs. I screamed that I wouldn't let them do it and shoved Alfred hard and ran down. I had to run. I couldn't make out the road because of the tears, but I could hear that I was being chased. I wouldn't give up so easily. It was getting harder to run. I slowed down in front of the school, and without thinking, I dashed inside. So I was at the damn pool and Alfred and Loki were slowly closing in on me. I started to carefully step back and then it was too slippery. In an instant, I fell into the pool. Pain shot through the back of my head as I hit the side of the edge. My vision went dark. I tried to swim to the surface, but I just floundered and swallowed water. The panic was making it harder to hold on. No, I didn't want to end like this. Then Loki jumped into the pool. Did he want to drown me? I tried to fight him up, but I was already so weak that I was sinking under the water. This was the end. Loki wrapped his arms around me, but instead of drowning me, he dragged me to the surface. I didn't understand anything at all. Why did he want to sell me for my organs? They looked at each other in bewilderment and suddenly laughed. They weren't going to sell anyone. Surgical instruments were the props for my birthday party. They wanted to make it in the style of a zombie hospital. What? But what about the conversation? 
Alfred wrote that he wanted to sell her for organs, and he measured my height. But my brother just smiled. In that conversation, he joked about the dog with which he was tired of walking, and he measured my height to order a costume for the party. I didn't believe it. Loki was acting strange too. He measured my pulse, for example. But Loki interrupted me. He was just worried that I was feeling bad because of the heat. I was all red. I was so ashamed. How could I think that about my own brother and Loki? I apologized to them and then smiled shyly. A kiss was really an effective way to distract me. But Loki suddenly hesitantly hugged me and exhaled it at first. He was really distracting me. But after the time we spent together, he realized that he liked me too. At this point, my heart almost stopped. Loki looked me in the eye and asked me quietly if I would be his girlfriend. His words turned my stomach. Of course, yes. A couple of days later, it was my birthday. And of course, we had a party in zombie style. It was the best party I'd ever had. And after this story, I never jumped to conclusions again. And I don't advise you to. Did you like the videos? Subscribe and like it. Support the channel. Thank you. The phone vibrated. It was Kaya, my sister. She was panicking, saying something about her boyfriend, a bed, some kind of basement. She begged to be saved, but then the connection was abruptly cut off. What? Again? My sister was always playing pranks, which made me mad. I always rushed to the rescue, but time after time, I only ran into my sister's pranks. I won't be fooled this time. I called her back, but she didn't pick up. I called her 100 times. What if it was serious this time? Kai was so convincing. But if it was a hoax again, I would just destroy her. I was going to look for her, but as I passed her room, I noticed an open laptop on the table. There was her conversation with Mitch on the screen. Oh no, did they get back together? He wrote that he was expecting her at his house today and sent her the address. Here you are, sister. 20 minutes later, I was at his house. I knocked and the door opened at the same moment. What if it was part of a prank after all? I told him I'd come for my sister, but Mitch hesitated and said he hadn't seen her in two days. It was kind of suspicious. I was worried. Noticing this, Mitch suggested that we look for her together. He called me inside and asked me to wait while it changed. Mitch lived in a cool house with a stylish renovation. There was a studio room on the first floor. I sat down on the bed and looked around. There were posters of athletes, a video game console, pictures of Mitch with some kids. Nothing special, just a strange handle sticking out of the wall. And then I noticed Kaya's back. Well then, it was definitely a joke. Sister, you can't fool me this time. I needed to play along with Mitch. When he came back, I told him I should probably call cops in case my sister was in danger. I already got my phone out. Suddenly, Mitch asked me if my heart was telling me something. After all, we were sisters and we should have some kind of intuitive connection. Are you kidding me? But I played along and replied that I felt like she was somewhere close. Mitch smiled strangely and said I was right. He jerked a handle on the wall. The bed beneath me parted and I fell down. What was going on? I fell somewhere and hurt myself. What was this place? Then with an effort, I got up and saw Kaya. She was trembling all over. Hmm, quite natural. But it was time to end this unfortunate joke. I shook myself off and gloated that I knew that this was just another stupid prank of hers. And I was already calling the police. But where was the phone? Looks like he stayed there. Heck. Kaya started shouting that I was a stupid fool. This wasn't a prank. She and Mitch had been fighting for the past month, and all of a sudden, he'd invited her over. Kaya thought it was an olive branch, but he suddenly pushed her into the basement, and she had been sitting here for 10 hours. It seemed strange to me, but there was one thing I was sure of. Kaya always picks out some assholes, and this one infuriated me especially. Once he even tried to conduct an educational conversation so that my sister and I would be kinder to each other. Mitch really annoyed me. He was weird. Time passed, but Mitch couldn't even be hurt. Kaya suddenly started crying and I felt uneasy. Hey, you're actually the eldest. Do you have any ideas on how to get out? Clear. So it was all on me again. I decided to look around. The light came from a small window near the ceiling. 
I could see that there was nothing in the basement but an old table and a door. I began to study the door. There was a similar lock in my room, which Kaya always unlocked with ease. I hated it, but it might save us now. Kaya perked up a little, took out a hairpin, and inserted it into the lock, but it immediately bent. How can you be so clumsy? I tried to figure out what to do, but Kaya made it difficult to think, tapping her foot nervously, and then I had an idea. I asked Kaya to take off her shoes with a massive heel and tried to knock out the lock with them. My sister watched in silence and was not going to help. She said that she was very sick. Never mind, we'll get out and then I'll show her sick. It went on for more than an hour. I knocked as hard as I could. I couldn't do anything. I sat down against the wall and cried softly. Suddenly, Kaya jumped up and said I was right. It was all hoax. But she was tired of being stuck here and she had had enough fun watching me to try to get out. She's a real head case. Only a psychopath could think of such a thing. Kaya screamed for Mitch to open the door. It was all over. There was silence upstairs. She started yelling at the top of her lungs and banging on the door. But Mitch still didn't come to the rescue. Suddenly, footsteps sounded from above. I already wanted to get out and stop talking to this idiot forever. And then we heard the sound of a chainsaw. Kaya was in panic, and I was annoyed by this prolonged joke. What's the use of a practical joke if you already know about it? Kaya yelled for Mitch to open up. The jokes were over. Duh, an actress. How much longer? But Kaya was sobbing in fright, repeating that it shouldn't be like this. That Mitch should have opened the door after her signal. Yeah, go on with you. Kaya became hysterical. I think I've only seen her like this once in my life, when our dad... Suddenly, smoke began to pour out from under the door. My special effects are these. I shifted my gaze to Kaya and felt a growing sense of unease. Kaya took off her earring and tried to pick the lock with trembling hands. I could hear the wooden beams crackling from the fire, and I knew from the sound that the fire was reaching the basement. Burning up in a locked room was my worst nightmare. Well, even if it was a hoax, I'd rather be a naive fool again than have nothing left of us. I was even afraid to think that. I had to open the window immediately, but it was so high. Kaya offered to move the table, but it was too heavy. We tried to move it, and then Kaya started coughing heavily from the smoke. Bagel, I, I think I'm fading. She whispered, Bagel, and that's what she called me when I was a kid. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid that she would fall, and I went to her, and Kaya hugged me. She didn't realize that Mitch was a real maniac. Kaya talked about how lonely she was after her father was hit by a car. Mom turned all her attention to me because I was the youngest, and Kaya was left alone with her pain. She always chose only strong guys, looking for support in them, and so ran into a psychopath. She also tracked me into it. Kaya coughed again. She was getting worse. I begged her to hold on just a little longer, but I knew there would be no miracle. My sister Fear quietly whispered that she loved me, and she was very sorry for what had happened. It's been so long since she said anything like that to me. Why now, when we were about to die? I replied through my tears that I loved her too. The door opened and Mitch came in, looking pleased. His smile faded when he saw Kaya lying on my lap, almost unconscious. He picked her up and carried her out of the basement. I understood nothing, but I followed him. When my sister caught her breath, Mitch said he was sorry, but now he had it all worked out. He managed to bring us together. It turned out that he was very upset by our quarrels because he was the older brother himself and knew how important peace was in the family. But after unsuccessful attempts to get through to us with conversations, he realized that he needed to act more radically and he had a plan to intimidate us so that in an extreme situation, we would unite in makeup. He thought it all out. The sound of burning wood and chainsaw was a recording and the smoke was a smoke machine effect. Got what he wanted? My sister and I looked at each other and, without speaking, pushed him onto the bed and Kaya lowered the lover. Now we're having tea in this kitchen and I'm so glad. I finally found a friend in my sister. 
Mitch's screams came from the basement, but they didn't bother us at all. Let him sit there for a couple of hours. Let's think about it. I stopped by my house, but there was no one there. Hmm, that's strange. Where is everyone? It's my birthday. I didn't recognize anything around me. The furniture was covered with white sheets, and the only sound was the ominous ticking of the clock. As if no one had lived here for a long time. Where'd everyone disappear to? I went through all the rooms on the first floor, but my parents were nowhere to be found. I called them non-stop. But I heard over and over again, the number is unavailable. Mom, Dad, where are you? Trying not to shiver, I climbed the stairs to my room, but when I went in, I just didn't recognize it. Where are my things? There was a strange backpack against the wall, and unfamiliar posters hung on the walls. Then I noticed our family photo on the nightstand, but when I got closer, I was horrified. There was a completely <gasps> different girl next to my parents and sister. Where am I? Tears welled up in my eyes. It's like I was wiped out of their life, and this was on my birthday. The day before, I invited my boyfriend Yu on a quest. I just adored them. I was constantly looking for thrills. Once I even jumped into a pit with snakes, that was a drive! But I had already been to all the quests in the city, and this time, I didn't expect anything special. But this was a chance to mend fences with you. We became very distant lately. We even talked less. Sometimes I thought he was going to dump me, but... This evening was supposed to remind us how good and fun we could be together. The quest took place in some basement, and we went there. The management wished us a hell of an adventure, and we went down the stairs. I was hoping it would be a little scary, but it was a complete failure. The props were pathetic. Some sausage guts, plastic knives covered in paint. And on the way out, they hung an inflatable <laughs> ghost. Are you serious? Just like a kid's matinee. I laughed and turned to you, but he wasn't there. Are you kidding? He was standing here a minute ago. Suddenly, I noticed a torn bracelet on the floor. I gave it to you for our anniversary. It seemed that our relationship was completely destroyed. You just ran away from me. I was very hurt because I loved you. Why did he do that? Completely heartbroken, I went outside and trudged home. While I was on the quest, my parents were busy preparing for the holiday. I was expecting balloons and gifts, but it was very quiet inside the house, except for the lonely ticking of the clock. Maybe it was a surprise, but I went all over the house and found no one. Not my father, not my mother, not my oldest sister, Joanna. Where could they have gone? I tried to call them, but every time I heard, the number is unavailable. The house itself looked eerie. The furniture was covered with white sheets, as if no one had lived there for a long time. I went up the stairs to my room, but stopped dead in my tracks. Everything here was different. There were some strange things. A backpack? Posters? Whose were they? I tossed around the room completely at a loss, and then I noticed a photo. My whole family was hugging some girl. But... That's impossible! It should be me! Horrified, I staggered back and dropped a photo to the floor. The glass shattered with a crash. It was like a terrible nightmare. There was no sign that I had ever lived here in the house. Instead of my favorite chair, books, awards, I found pictures of that girl and unfamiliar things everywhere. Had I lost my mind? My family still did not return calls. Gosh. What if something had happened to them? Then, I remember that my friend's uncle Chris was a police officer. Maybe he could help me. I called Chris and after a long time, she answered. Hi Chris, it's Sarah. I gave her a quick description of the situation and Chris said she knew something. The fact was that my family, she fell silent. Not again, Chris. Are you here? I shouted, but it was useless. The signal went dead. My breath caught in my throat. So Chris knew where everyone had gone. 
I immediately rushed to her house. I pounded on the door with my fists long and hard. No one answered me. As a result, a neighbor came out of the house opposite. You shouldn't be knocking. There's been no one here for a year. She grumbled. Where did Chris go? The neighbor replied that she moved out after the death of her friend. The old woman slammed the door. I didn't understand anything. Chris didn't have any friends, just me. But I was not dead. Chris, open up now. This isn't funny. I shouted, pounding on her door even harder. And then my older sister called. Thank God, but Joanne was so distant. Hello? I have a missed call from you. Did you call? Hey, Joanne, it's me, Sarah. But my sister started screaming that I was a liar. Her sister had been dead for a year. It didn't make sense. Joanne, I'm here. I'm alive. But she wasn't listening. Joanne accused me of being involved in the death of Sarah. Her sister, in a voice mad with anger, she threatened that I would answer for everything. I frantically hung up. Joanne kept calling, but I was already so scared that I didn't pick up the phone. And suddenly, I felt that someone was watching me. I turned around, but there was no one around. I was shaking with fear, like I was in a horror movie. This wasn't the kind of 20th birthday I dreamed of. Not knowing where else to go, I went home again. It was late at night when I reached my home, which seemed even more alien in the dark. I was afraid to go in. Then I noticed a light in my room. Someone was back. Delighted, I was already running into the porch when the door creaked open. It was Joanne. She grinned maliciously, saying that it was good that I came to her myself. You will answer to me for Sarah's death. Joanne suddenly screamed and threw herself at me. I ran in a panic. What kind of trash is going on? Joanne, come to your senses. I'm your sister. But Joanne would drive me into narrow alleys and scream that I couldn't get away from her. Oh my god. I tried to call for help, but there wasn't a soul on the street. And then I saw a sign that there was a 24-hour coffee shop nearby. With the last of my strength, I rushed there. I ran to the entrance and yanked the handle, but it wouldn't budge. And then I saw a sign on the door that said, we moved. It was all over. I looked back. I could already see the ominous silhouette of Joanne in the light of the lantern. Damn, I'm done. But then I noticed the same quest where I was with you. The basement door was ajar. This was my chance. I quickly ran inside and barricaded the door. But Joanne was pounding madly at it. I prayed the door would hold. It bent more and more from her attacks. It seemed that the hinges were about to fly out. A few minutes later, Joanne was quiet. Was she gone? But just as I let out a sigh of relief, I heard a deafening crash. Joanne smashed the door with her fit. Splinters flew at me, and John's crazy face appeared in the hole with a twisted smile. Terrified, I raced through the dark basement corridors. I heard that Joan was already inside, following me closely. In desperation, I looked around and shouted for help, but no one answered. Suddenly, I hit a wall. What should I do next? Joan was already close. I had nowhere to run, and then I saw the closet. This was my last hope. I climbed into it and sat there trying not to breathe, but I'd already heard Joanne come into the room. Come out! I know you're here. She ordered, then I heard slow footsteps approaching. I couldn't move in horror. Suddenly, the closet door swung open. Please don't! I screamed hysterically. At that moment, I was blinded by a flash of bright light. Opening my eyes with difficulty, I saw my parents, all my friends, Chris and you. Happy birthday. Everyone shouted cheerfully in unison. Joan winked. It turned out that you had long ago persuaded her to arrange a unique quest for me. So I was wrong to suspect. And you really loved me since he planned it all. He persuaded everyone. I love Thrill so much. So, it was a hoax? I almost passed out from fear. I wanted to shout out what I should do with them for such jokes. But suddenly, my vision went dark and the basement seemed to spin in front of me. I began to choke and lose consciousness. I 
barely opened my eyes. Where am I? What's going on? Then the doctor came up to me and said that I was in the hospital. I was brought here by ambulance. I felt very weak. Was I terminally ill? But the doctor reassured me that it was a faint and now everything was fine. I was just very scared. You better cross stitch and not go on quests, he joked. The doctor said I had a weak heart. Fortunately, I did have a heart attack. I felt very sad that I had brought myself to this date. In an attempt to tickle my nerves, I completely forgot about real life. That's it. No more horrors. At this point, anxious friends and family trooped into my room. They had gifts in their hands and you even brought me a bouquet of my favorite flowers. Thank you, I said wearily. This is the 20th birthday I will never forget.